Hello and welcome to Code Tutorials. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about how to set up your website footer. So here we are at the original Stockholm demo site. And if we scroll down the page, we will see the site's footer. Now this footer here, you might notice that it's comprised of two different sections. We have the top footer with the text and the social icons and the links, but we also have a footer bottom with the copyright mention. So Stockholm supports having two different footer areas, and each of these footer areas can be divided into columns. And looking at this demo site here, we can see that the footer top has four columns and the footer bottom has one column. Now, when you start building your site footer, it's completely customizable. So you can pick whether to have both of these footer areas showing, or you can have only one of the footer areas, but with a different number of columns that will be in your footer. So in this video, I will be showing you how to create a footer from scratch. I will be using the same demo we're looking at on my own site. And this is it. So when I scroll down on my site, we can see that right now there's no footer. In order to set up my footer, I will first of all navigate to my dashboard and go to select options, then footer. Here we see several options that pertain to the site's footer. Most of these are disabled and I'll be explaining what each of them does. But for now, we want to enable the show footer top option. So let's switch this to yes. As soon as we've done that, we see several new options that belong to the footer top. You can use these to customize the footer top style and layout. So first of all, we have the footer top columns field. We can choose the number of columns we'll have in the footer. Stockholm supports having up to four columns in the top footer. Of course, you might want to have less content in your footer, so if you don't need that many columns, you can pick a smaller number. Now, over here, you will see three different options for the three column layout. If you choose the first one, your columns will all have equal sizes and take up the same amount of space. However, the other two options are interesting. This one says three columns, but there's also 25 plus 25 plus 50 percent in the brackets. If you choose this option, your third column will be wider than the first two. In fact, it will take up half of the footer space and the rest will be evenly divided between columns 1 and 2. And the last three column option here says 50 plus 25 plus 25 percent. So if you choose this option, then your first column will be wider than the other two. These options are useful if you want to add a map or show your Instagram feed. Generally, anything that needs a bit more space to be properly visible. But, in my case now, I want to have equally sized columns and a lot of space to show you different things. So I'm just going to leave this set to 4. After that, we can choose whether to set a border between the footer columns. Then below that, it says footer top area style. This is where we can give our footer a background color, a top border color. And we can also set a padding for it. The padding values can be added in pixels or percentages. If you choose to set a custom padding, remember, the higher the numbers that you enter, the taller your footer will appear. Alright, then we have footer top title style. These options here let us change the title text color, font, weight, etc. And we can do the same for the text style in our footer top, as well as the link style. These options are more or less the same as the ones we saw in title style settings for the footer top and they all serve to help you customize the style of your footer content. Let's go back to the top now and save any changes that were made. Now I can go back to my site and refresh my homepage to see if the footer will be there. And when we scroll down, we see that nothing has happened. This is because we haven't added any content to our footer, so there's nothing to show. So in order to add content, we need to navigate to Appearance Widgets. Here on the right, we will see the widget areas that belong to the footer. One area for each column. And we have footer column 1, footer column 2, footer column 3, and footer column 4. If you set fewer columns for your footer top, then you'll have fewer widget areas to work with. Since widgets are usually added using a drag and drop method, you need to aim carefully here. So when you're adding your widgets, make sure you're adding them to the appropriate widget area. Because if you picked a three column layout, and add something to the fourth column, it won't be visible. Alright, let's add some content to my footer. And let's start with the first column. That will be the one that will be displayed on the far left on our page. And in there I want to add a text widget. 
Within it, using the text editor tab, I'm going to add shortcodes for my social icons and a bit of text in HTML format. And let me just save the change. Now, I'll be honest, I'm cutting a corner here. I added the entire content of the whole column using a single widget. When you do this on your end, you will probably have several different widgets instead. One for the title, one for the text, one for the social icons. But this is about showing you how to add footer content in general. This video isn't intended to deal with widget specifics. Now let's move on to the second column. In here I'm going to add a recent posts widget. Within it I'll just quickly add a title, like recent posts, so people know what they're looking at. And save. Then we can move on to the third column. And in here I will be adding a navigation menu widget. Now this will only help me display a menu, but it won't help me make one. In order to do that, you need to go to Appearance Menus and then create a menu as you would any other. Once you have a menu, you will be able to add it using the Navigation Menu widget. I already created a menu for my footer beforehand, so I'll just add it now. I'm going to select it from this drop down and I'm going to add a title for this widget, like Useful Links. And let's save the changes. And finally, for the fourth column, I'm going to add another text widget. Within it, I'll add a shortcode that will help me display a Flickr photo stream. And don't forget to save. Now I can close this and we can take a look at our site. I'm going to refresh the page and let's scroll down the page to see if the footer is there now. Yes, there it is. So I added HTML text and social icon shortcodes to the first footer column. And they rendered like this. In the second column we have a recent posts widget displaying the 5 latest posts from the blog. In the third column we have the navigation menu with custom menu items. And in the fourth column we have the Flickr photo stream. So that's our footer top done. But if you recall, at the start of the video I mentioned that Stockholm allows two different sections. Footer top was one. Footer bottom is the other. So let's go all the way back to the start and open select options footer. Now if we scroll down and beyond the footer top options, we see an option called show footer bottom. Let's go ahead and enable that. Similarly to the footer top, we now have options pertaining to the footer bottom. So once again, I can set my footer bottom to have a certain height, a background color, top border color, or to be in grid. The footer top is in grid, it's not full width. So you can enable this to match it, or deliberately leave it different, like I will. Below that, we have the text style and link style options, which are the same ones we had for the footer top. I'm going to go ahead and save changes now. Before we check the page front end, I just want to mention this option again, the height for the footer bottom. This controls how high your footer bottom will be. If you leave it blank, it will use the theme default settings. However, you can add a pixel value here that will let you increase the size of your footer, if you like. Now, let's go back to Appearance Widgets, so we can add some content to our footer bottom. None of the widget areas is called footer bottom, but we know that footer columns 1 through 4 were for our footer top, which means that the footer text widget area is for our footer bottom. And when we open it up, we can see there's already a text widget in here, and it contains some copyright text in HTML format. You can replace this widget entirely or put something else in the footer bottom. Or you can edit the text here. I'm going to opt for the second one so you can see that working with HTML text is actually very simple. All you need to do is avoid the HTML markup and select only the text so you can replace it. I'll say change your text here. And let's save this widget. Now we can head over to refresh the page and see how everything looks. And here we are. We can see the footer bottom as well as the new text I put in. So now you know how to change your footer bottom as well as your footer top. There is one last thing I want to show you. Let me close this up first. I want to show you how to disable the grid for your footer top in case you want to make it full width. For that we need to go to select options, footer. So we can access our global footer settings. Now, in here we have this option called footer and grid. Currently it's enabled and it's making our footer top kind of compact. But if we disable this, let me show you. Just a moment. Let's take a look. 
here we are. Our footer top is now stretched from screen edge to screen edge. When outside of the grid, it's going to take up the full width of the available space. It can be quite useful if you need more room to add extra content. I'll just return it to the original setting because we've reached the end of this tutorial. So, in this video, we talked about how to set up your footer. We hope you found it useful and that you learned something new. If you'd like to be notified about upcoming videos, you can subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Thank you for watching.